Hello friends, how are you? Welcome to Easy Learning Economics. This is Dr. Cavill, PhD in Economics. Today our topic is returns to scale and its calculation. This is part 2 in which we talk about the law of constant marginal return and causes. In the first part we discuss the law of increasing marginal return and its causes and economies of scale. Now we are going to discuss about what is constant return and its causes. Today our lecture plan is that what is constant return to scale and its application and where the constant return applies. What are the assumptions of constant returns to scale? How can we mathematically represent the law of constant returns? So, what is the opinion of the marshals with regards to the constant return? What are those factors affecting efficiency of labor? What are the factors affecting price? So, what is constant return and constant cost? Why we say that the constant return and constant cost go together? So, I would like to suggest here some of my video that would be helpful to understand this topic. The first video is law of variable proportion or laws of returns in which we discussed in detail about the law of variable proportion about three stages increasing constant and decreasing returns. So, this would be the base for you to go through this video and the other video which is the returns to scale and its calculation part 1 law of increasing returns. So, you must watch these videos. We are talking about constant returns to scale and its applications. So, what is constant returns to scale and its application? So, how can we define the constant return to scale? It means if increase in inputs leads to equal proportionate increase in output, this is called constant returns to scale. It means that every successive unit of labor and capital when they are applied on fixed spectral land, the same marginal product at the optimum level of production is obtained. Here you can see in this diagram that, that the labor has been shown on x axis and capital has been shown on y axis by applying the different units of labor and capital we get the same level of output. The marginal production is 200 minus 100 is 100, 300 minus 200 is 100. The marginal production at this point is 100, the marginal production at this point is 100 and marginal production also at this point is 100. So, it means the marginal productions remain same throughout the production. Where this law applies? What is the application of this law? Because constant returns to scale is rarely observed. So, this law functions where human and natural factor play key role is the blanket industry and this is the carpet industry where pure natural wool is used while blankets and carpets are prepared in the presence of human factors. What are those assumptions on the basis of the law of constant returns to scale function as we know that the product is the combined efforts of factor of production that are land, machine, labor production function explains the relationship between input and output. So, here we assume in order to prove the law of constant marginal returns, it is assumed that some factors are variable. The prices of raw material and prices of factor of production are fixed. The supply of various factors for an industry should be perfectly elastic. All units of variable factors of production are equally efficient. So, these are the assumptions on the basis of law of constant returns to scale functions. So, now how can we represent the constant returns to scale in mathematical form? You can see in this diagram that output Q is function of labor and capital. You can say mathematically that output is represented through Q. Q is function of labor and capital. It means the output is function of labor and capital. If output is function of labor and capital and labor and capital rises by h and output q rises by lambda suppose, then the lambda q is function of h l h k. So, there will be constant return if the lambda is equal to h and output increases in the same proportion of input due to optimum and efficient utilization of resources. 
suppose if we increase the labor and capital with 20 percent that we get the output is also increased with 20 percent. So, it means the output increase with the same proportion to increase in input. Means 20 percent increase in labor and capital results that the 20 percent increase in output that output increases from 40 to 48. It means this is the constant return to scale. What is the Marshall's opinion with regards to constant returns to scale? So Marshall has extended the example of carpet industry in this regard. This is the carpet industry where raw material achieved from sheep and breeding husbandry of sheep while standard of wool and grazing fields are controlled by human. All the types of human controls are started at the stage of converting the wool into carpet. When carpet industry is expanded, the price of raw material increases with increased demand. But on the other side, level of production rises through better human control and techniques of production. Consequently, the increased cost is neutralized through increase in production due to optimum and efficient utilization of resources. The question arises, what are those factors which affect the efficiency ever and uh, what are those factors which have to achieve the optimum and constant returns through efficient utilization of resources. Different factors may affect the efficiency of labor. Here is a chart. You can see here that the technical factors affects the labor efficiency. The production factors affects the labor efficiency. Organizational factors affects the productivity through labor efficiency, personal factors, finance factors, management factors, government factors and the location factor these also affects the labor productivity and efficiency of labor. So, we can say that the factors which may affect the efficiency of labor is climate also, income and standard of living, working conditions general and technical education of labor, efficiency of other factors, welfare services, motivation and incentives, these affects the labor efficiency. So, these all factors remain same. What are those factors which affects the price? These are the internal and external factors which affects the price that marketing objectives, marketing mix strategy, cost organizational consideration, nature of the market and demand, the competition, other environmental factors, economy resellers and the government, these are the factors which affects the price. So, we can say that the demand, supply, government regulations, cost of inputs, product life cycle, credit policy, promotional activities, image of the firm, customer, competitors and economic conditions also affects the price. So, these factors also must remain same. Why we say that the constant return and constant cost go together? The principle of constant modern return and constant cost are two different sides of the same coin. Constant return creates the balance between the increasing and diminishing return. This table will be helpful to understand the constant return. It is assumed that the area of the land remains fixed that is 10 hectares. So, this table also assumes that the cost of one unit of labor and capital is 500. So, by applying the first labor and first capital, the total cost is 500, total production units are 50. So, the marginal production is 50 and long run average cost is 10 as we know to calculate total cost divided by the total production 500 divided by 50 the, to the, the average cost is 10 rupees. By applying the second dose of labor and capital the total cost the entrepreneur incurs that is 1000 and total production increases from 50 to 100 and uh, the marginal production is also 50 that the 100 minus 50 the marginal production is 50 and average cost is also 10 that 1000 total cost divided by the total production 100 the average cost is 10 rupees. So, by applying 
the third dose of labor and capital, fourth dose of labor and capital, the total cost become 1500 and 2000 and, to and total production increases from 150 to 200 and the long run average cost that remains same throughout that is 10. Whereas the marginal production on the other side remains same that is 50. So it means that the constant return and the constant cost go together. It, we can convert this graph into table to analyze in other way that here you can see in the graph that the marginal production has been shown on y axis whereas the, the doses of labor and capital has been shown on x axis by applying the first, second, third, fourth and fifth dose of labor and capital the total production is uh, increases but the marginal production remains same that is 50, 50, 50. So it means that the marginal production remains same. This is the constant returns to scale. So how we can analyze here that the marginal production and marginal cost goes together. So in the other part now in the other graph we are going to observe that the marginal cost in relations to the marginal production. You can compare these two graphs. Average cost has been shown on y axis and the doses of labor and capital have been shown on x axis. By applying the first dose of labor that the average cost is 10 and by applying the second, third, fourth, fifth that the long run average cost also remains same that is 10 and here the marginal production is also the same that is 50. So it means constant return and the constant cost goes together. I hope this uh, topic would be more clear to you. So if you have any query. I welcome your all queries you may ask in comment box and if you like this video please subscribe my channel and press bell icon thank you for watching